I'm Dr. Steve Nissen, and I'm here with Brad Williams, who's a dedicated pharmacist in the uh, heart failure field, and with Jerry Estep, who's a section head for heart failure and transplantation at the Cleveland Clinic. We're going to talk about drug recalls and you know what you really need to know. So Brad, bring us up to speed. Which drugs have been recalled? And have all the drugs in the class been recalled? Can you help us understand what has happened so far? So the, the group of drugs belonging to the angio, angiotensin receptor blockers or yeah. ARBs are the drugs that have been affected yeah. by the recall that we've, we've all been dealing with. Specifically within that class, there's been valsartan, uh, losartan, and erbisartan have yeah. been the affected three. Yeah. Um, and it's not that every product that has that name has been affected. It's only been certain lots that have been affected. Yeah. Um, this started in July of 2018 with valsartan and kind of over the subsequent time we've seen newer drugs being listed for recall. Um, but it's been those three agents up until this point. Um, it's important too to point out that the drugs like the sacubitrol valsartan have not been affected by the recall yeah. and nor have any of the brand name drugs. Yeah. So uh, the original brands of those drugs are okay, but of course they're more, much more expensive right Exactly, now. exactly. So um, this seems like a recurring theme now. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question obviously is how can physicians uh, stay up to speed on all of this? What are the tools that are available? That's a good question. Uh, the biggest resource is probably the FDA, but I know from speaking with our physicians that they obviously have numerous responsibilities and checking the FDA website regularly for yeah. recalls yeah. sometimes doesn't happen. There are uh, opportunities for, for signing up for notifications through the MedWatch, through the FDA system that, that may keep you aware of any new recalls. And there's also resources on the FDA website to actually search for specific products and lots that have been affected. Uh, but I think a bigger picture, we need to think about how we're going to tackle these recalls more systematically because as you said this is not going to be a problem that goes away we need to have you know sort of a preemptive response built in for how we determine if this recall necess necessitates communication to our physicians and to patients and then how we disseminate that information once it's been determined so when you've identified that your patient has a, uh, a drug that's been recalled uh, jerry uh, so what's the procedure you, you, you recommend that people go about in terms of dealing with it? So I think most important to uh, highlight to uh, patients and providers is to not panic and do not stop the medication. There can be implications negative with stopping an ARB. Rebound high blood pressure, the heart failure condition can exacerbate. The likelihood of having a problem over the time duration to sort it out, so to speak, is so very, very small and the risk is not negligible Concept one to highlight is to, to not stop the medication. I think then it's important to reach out to your pharmacist. They actually have access mm -hmm. um, above and beyond you reaching out and looking at FDA.gov. They can define whether the type of ARB, the specific prescription you have, mm -hmm. is part of the lot or manufacturer where there is an impurity to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. And so you may not have to change the ARB once that's confirmed. So I think reaching out to your pharmacist um, is key, and if it turns out that it's not affected and you can stay on, on your ARB, then you can continue and have that conversation with your physician. So I hear from my patients that, in fact, I get this complaint all the time, that they go in and they get one brand of the drug, mm -hmm. they get it refilled, mm -hmm. even from Cleveland Clinic Pharmacy, yeah. and now it's another brand. And now they say, well, maybe this is a bad one. Yeah. So can you help us understand what's going on there? I mean, this, this changing around of brands right. is really causing our patients a lot of uh, anxiety. I agree. Uh, yeah, I mean, a pharmacy, you know, we talk about retail pharmacy, it's, it's a business where a profit needs to be made as well as providing that care. So they're obviously going to seek out what products are most cost effective for them, and that may change on a month-to-month -month basis. So you may see when a patient goes back and gets a refill of their Losartan, it may be a different manufacturer than it was previously. Now, once the FDA has identified a lot that's been uh, uh, shown to be contaminated, the pharmacies should and, and are removing the affected lot from their shelves. Where we've run into problems with the ARBs is 
you know, we have been discovering new lots that have been affected, which kind of complicates the matters. I don't know a good solution to answer <laughs> your question see, yeah. because it's difficult enough for a patient on five or six medications to be able to get to the pharmacy to get everything refilled on time. And I don't think the solution is you're going to have to check your manufacturer at this pharmacy yeah. and then go to this pharmacy for your other medication. So yeah. I would just try to make sure patients are informed of true risk when it develops, like as has been the case with the ARBs, and that they know what tools they have at their discretion to determine if they're actually subject to that risk. Do we need to worry about a race to the bottom that uh, fundamentally, you know, you save a penny or two on a tablet, so mm -hmm. if you go and you get something from, a, you know, from China or India mm -hmm. or some other, mm -hmm. you know, provider, and mm -hmm. so is, is, is the concern here that we're going to actually get less and less quality generics. I mean, is that an issue? I'm concerned about the global expansion of the manufacture of U.S. drug products. And my specific concern is that the, the FDA is a federal agency that's designed to monitor a federal body of, of, of uh, medications. But now with this global market where we're having drug products manufactured all over the world, the FDA, I think, may be stretched a little thin. I, if I'm recalling correctly, at this point, 80% of all pharmaceutical ingredients used in our medications are manufactured outside of the United States. Yes. And the FDA is taking steps to combat that by opening offices, offices globally, um, but I think it's still, we're kind of in that catch-up phase. How do we tackle this problem now that it's that it's a global issue rather than a federal domestic issue. Yeah. So with the, uh, Jerry, with the development of Secubitril Valsartan, yes. uh, is this problem diminishing now? I mean, you're obviously treating patients differently than you were even a few years ago. So that, that is correct. Um, Secubitril Valsartan as a combination drug is superior when compared to ACE inhibition. And in fact, when I reflect on when and how we're using ARBs in patients with heart failure, it's if they have a drug allergy, like swelling in the back of the throat, angioedema, or intolerance, or, or a cough, where we sometimes use patients or keep patients on an ARB if they happen to already yeah. be on it. But now with Sacubitril Valsartan being superior to ACE and how it's been shown to improve how long one's gonna live, keep patients out of the hospital, patients tend to feel better on it, um, we're very much uh, in favor and are advocating, in fact, of switching patients, even if they have just mild symptoms and the rejection fraction is less than 40%, we're switching them to um, this ARNI class of medication. And I think if a patient happens to have uh, that ARB with a lot identified as having an impurity, mm -hmm. you know, certainly don't stop it abruptly, but the conversation in my mind, in my mind with their provider is to um, talk about options. And now with Arnie uh, Succubitril Valsartan um, readily available, it makes a lot of sense to, sw to switch them out. And so, yes, it's, in my mind, it's less of an issue given what we have as part of our armamentarium to treat patients. Yeah. You know, some people have suggested that uh, angiotensin receptor blockers are overutilized. Would you guys both want to comment on that? Do you think they're overutilized? Uh, they, they may be overutilized. I mean, I can speak to our practice specifically, and I, I feel like we are using them more in those scenarios that you've already brought up where yeah. patients may have been intolerant to an ACE. Yeah. And then also a time we're using them now is if we're considering initiation of sacubitril valsartan to avoid that washout period that's required with the transition between the ACE inhibitor and the sacubitril valsartan. So if we have a patient coming in with symptoms, we're not entirely sure if they'll be able to tolerate secubitril valsartan for hemodynamic reasons or, or whatever the case may be. We can trial them on the ARB in the short term with the intention of transitioning them to the yeah. secubitril valsartan yeah. ultimately. So I'll opine about this myself. I, do, <laughs> I see a lot of people coming in who are being treated for hypertension, not necessarily heart mm -hmm. failure, uh, you know, with um, 100 milligrams a day of losartan and, uh, you know, multiple head-to-head trials have shown that that's an inferior antihypertensive uh, regimen, that uh, it is less effective than any of the other ARBs. And so, you know, I find it a little frustrating because mm -hmm. it was the first one on the market and people started using it and they never kind of 
uh, modernize their care. And so I use it as an opportunity to talk to the patient. And I will switch them from, mm -hmm. particularly if they have you know borderline blood pressure, to a more effective sure. uh, ARB. Uh, and the other issue that comes up, at least for me, is that I do think that ARBs are useful when people don't tolerate ACE inhibitors, but they're not preferable to mm -hmm. ACE inhibitors. And so, so I would tend to use you know an ARB in somebody who comes in and says, boy, you know, ever since you started me on the lisinopril, I've had this nagging mm -hmm. you know, cough, mm -hmm. it's driving me crazy, mm -hmm. and I'll say, well, we have an alternative mm -hmm. for you. But I would never consider it as the first line sure. drug to use for either hypertension or heart failure. And I, I was gonna, I echo that 100%. For heart failure patients, by no means is it first line ab above ACE or now sacubitril yeah. of Valsartan. And it's when patients have problems with ACE inhibitor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, no, same thing. I think it's overutilized in patients with heart failure, yeah. you know, based upon uh, what was mentioned. So, yeah, I agree yeah. 100%. And even, even in the case of if a patient's intolerance is a cough, that's still an opportunity for secubitrol valsartan as well. Yeah. It's basically just if patients have angioedema to an ACE inhibitor, then you may yeah. consider yeah. starting them on ARB. So it's really a yeah. niche yeah. opportunity. But as we all know, that's a reasonably rare, you know, right. true angioedema. Right. It's a pretty rare, pretty rare mm -hmm. adverse effect. Mm -hmm. So uh, it sounds like we pretty much all agree. Um, you know, this, there may be a silver lining here in all of this, which is it may be an opportunity to get patients on to more effective heart failure regimens. Mm -hmm. uh, when they come in with concerns about you know, the recall, uh, it's a chance for a, a teachable moment mm -hmm. and talking to the patient about, is there a better therapy for you? And uh, so I suppose that could be a silver lining in this dark cloud. Thank you both for uh, bringing us up to speed on the challenging area of ARB recall.